get going. So uh, good morning again. Uh, we got a lot to do today. Um, we are going to look at a big one called Author's Purpose, oh, and then yeah. maybe a New ZLA article if we've got the time. All righty. So, let's screen share on here. You all can see this, of course, right? And this again, this is two minutes. Real quick, I just want to show you two minutes, a little blurb about the basics of author's purpose. Then we're going to look at a PowerPoint. All right. Super fun. My name is Mrs. And I'm so excited to help you with your author's purpose. Authors have different methods to writing. Some words that describe why authors write are to persuade, inform, engage, teach, explain, show, and. Uh, she said that he, Diane said. We don't have an invite. Could you ask Brian to give David uh, David's info and send one? Uh, they need an invite. Well, I sent it on the email like nine times. So let's. She let's didn't. Say what? Uh, she didn't get the invite. Okay. Let's let's clear that up and fix that real quick. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. Kano. Yes. Chicano David. Yeah, that's the person. Yep. And I'm going to email them really quick right now, then. He's got email in now. Okay. Good. Uh, I'll do two things. I'm going to email him. And then I can I can actually give him the let's look at uh, da, 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 the summer. Summer zoom info. There we go. Boom, zoom info. All right. If you want to, I'll copy and paste in if you can, Brian. I'm gonna put this in the chat. Okay. okay. That's the uh, meeting ID and that's the password. So. Okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Cool. I may try to make it as easy as possible for you. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So if you can relay that info to them and then. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. So we'll go back real quick and do that. Finish this little video out and then see if um, we can add Mr. Tricano. All right. So there's this guy. All right. All right. And I'm so excited to help you review author's purpose. Those have different meanings to write. Some words that describe why authors write are to persuade, inform, engage, teach, explain, show, and educate. The author's purpose usually connects to the heading, title, or subheading, subtitle. Authors usually also have a message to share. Often, the author does not tell us the message directly. We have to infer or guess the message using details from the text. Use ideas. Acts and examples from the text to help them infer the author's purpose and message. So remember, authors usually have a purpose for writing and the message they want to share. The 
author's purpose usually supports the title or topic of the text. And good readers use details from the text to support the author's purpose and message. Okay, scholars, I can already tell you are ready for practice. She's really excited. Um, all right, so let me. I think you're ready to practice. Let's do some practicing. All right, so you can see me again? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes All we right. can. Uh, is, do you know if um, Tricano's getting on or no? Uh, she didn't respond back to me yet. Okay, cool. I'll, let, I'll have that open if she does and I'm in the middle of something, I will let him. Um, oh, okay. Um, all right, um, so one of the big ideas here uh, when we're talking about author's purpose, we're going to talk about three specific ones. That video had like six, but I think we can narrow them down to six. We can think of pie, P-I-E, okay? You're either going to write or read, and it's going to be a persuasion, okay, persuasive, and that's the P. Uh, your, your I uh, is informative, okay? And your uh, E is to explain. So let's look at a uh, real quick PowerPoint. Hopefully it's quick at least. Oh. We're on a Wednesday, so nothing's quick. You can all see this, right? Author yeah. purpose. Real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Lesson. Real quick lesson, real quick review about this. We don't have to spend forever on this because I know uh, you guys are going to get it. So the author's purpose. Um, is the reason why that author is writing something, okay? Big idea we have, and I know they did this kind of backwards, but is persuade, inform, entertain. You can always think of pi, you wanna remember those first letters, and you can, you know that's one of three options here, okay? So we'll first talk about entertain, the next is inform, uh, and then the next is persuade, okay? So when you're talking, I sometimes when I'm, I'm thinking about maybe a novel we're reading or an article you're reading, I want to think of it and try to put it into maybe everyday terms like maybe TV shows or movies. So when you're looking at a, a movie that is just purely entertaining, it's not informative, it's not to persuade you, I want, I want to think of like a sitcom, okay? When you're talking about... Um, like the show um, Seinfeld. You didn't really learn a bunch of information. It's not Bill Nye the Science Guy where you're learning <laughs> science. It's just a show about reality that's kind of funny, okay? Uh, it wasn't to persuade you. It's not trying to get you to vote a certain way. It's not trying to get you to think a certain way. Seinfeld is a really good example of just uh, to entertain, okay? So we can think of, um, oops, that went quick, what the heck happened here? Let's try this again. All right, um, so when we're talking about text, we wanna know that the examples, you have a, sto uh, a story about a kid that can overcome bullies, we're giving examples here, a poem about bullying, and then a play about bullying, uh, a bully losing his friends, okay? So stories, poems, and plays may teach a lesson, but the author's main purpose is just to purely entertain. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Next one is inform. When you're thinking about infor informing, I want to go back to something like, again, we watch, most of us watch TV. These are like your documentaries. Okay. This is Nat Geo. This is Discovery Channel. Like we are just trying to give you information like the History Channel. It's not trying to persuade you to, to necessarily think a different way. It might not even be super entertaining. I think they're entertaining. I like the History Channel, but when you narrow it down to its purest form, when you're writing or reading, or in this case, we're talking about TV shows, informative TV shows are just to give you some information, okay? So uh, sometimes they're a little bland, like a set of directions to, to create a birdhouse. Like I would not, you don't sit in bed and read instructions on how to make a birdhouse and think that that's super entertaining do you i know i don't 
or an article about the habits of a rare bird or a report predicting the day's weather, okay? So some directions, articles, and reports may be entertaining, but the author's main, main, main purpose is to really inform you, okay? Um, next one, to persuade. Now, persuasion, you have to, when you're reading, especially when you're reading or you're analyzing, even if you're writing, if somebody is trying to make you think a certain way, okay, that is persuasive. If they're going to give you a bunch of examples and statistics about why you should think that um, uh, owning a gun is good or bad, you, you might, or just as an example, here's some more examples. A flyer saying vote no on Proposition 54, or you should vote for me. I think of these are your infomercials that are trying to sell you things, or what we'll see this year as um, those commercials for politicians, political commercials, okay? You're, you're gonna see Donald Trump, and he's gonna try to persuade you to vote for him again, if that makes sense. And then I think of a commercial for foot cream, a letter pleading for forgiveness, okay? So be careful um, that uh, a text that is written to persuade may also be entertaining and, entertaining and informative. It's kind of, it could be like a funny commercial, but it is to make you think and to make you um, believe a certain way, okay? So, a couple things we have to ask ourselves, all right? Is whatever I'm reading, watching, is it something to entertain? Is it informative? Or is it persuasive, okay? Now, if the story, uh, if it's a story, poem, or play, it's probably entertainment. Uh, is the text teaching me about something or showing me how to do something? That's probably informative. If the text is trying to get me to do something or believe something, then we have persuasive, okay? So let's move on. All right, so we're gonna do, you don't have to flip your sheet over or anything. Look, we're just gonna look at some of these, read them, and then uh, do some more practice, IXL practice, and then we'll see if we have some time. We might or may not have some time for um, New ZLA. Let's, I'm gonna stop real quick to see if, no, he's not in the thing, okay. He's not in the queue. So maybe tomorrow he's in there, all right? We're talking about Tricano. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, okay, a poem about a garbage truck that uses a lot of onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is like bang, boom, smack. It's words that sound like they are, okay? So when we're thinking about is it informative? Um, is it entertainment, okay? Or is it persuasive? What do you guys think? Entertainment. So it's entertainment. Man. You're looking at a poem about a garbage truck that uses a lot of onomatopoeia. It's just to entertain you. A five paragraph essay in which the author attempts to convince readers to recycle more and to be less wasteful. What do you guys think? Is this- Just persuade. Is this- Persuade. Okay, so we think it's persuade. I think that the evidence there is that they're trying to convince you to recycle more, all right? That's why uh -huh. I believe that's persuasive. Next one, let's look at number three. Uh, a short story about a boy who never cleans his room and the horrible mess that it accumulates. Entertain. Yeah, that's entertainment. For sure. Instructions on how to make a compost pile. Inform. Informative, yeah. A bookmark that a bookmark with facts about garbage, such as the average weight of garbage created each year by each individual and the height and width of the largest pile of garbage. Informative. Yes, informative. Okay. A story, number six, a story of a garbage truck who has a hard time making friends. <laughs> what do you guys think? Informative or entertainment or persuasive? 
Entertain. I mean, entertain. I meant to say entertainment, my bad. Yeah, this is purely <laughs> Yeah, me too. Especially if you're just laughing, definitely entertainment. Number seven, an article in a magazine comparing and contrasting waste management in New Mexico and, I'm sorry, in New York City and Mexico City. Informative. It's definitely informative, okay? That's what I'm thinking, informative. If it had, if it had um, number seven, if it said, and it was going to tell you that New York City does a better job, then it would be persuasive. A billboard asking voters to appoint Joe Santiago as sanitation commissioner. Persuasive. Yeah, so that is persuasive. Yes. That's getting you to think or vote. Ooh, excuse me. Great. Um, to vote or drink a uh, vote or or think a certain way. All right. Number nine. The script for a television commercial to be read by Miley Cyrus telling viewers to make environment, environmentally friendly decisions because the future generations depend on it. Um, yeah, when you're, gonna get a, when you're gonna get a famous person in there just to persuade. How about a sticker on the trash compactor that shows how to operate it? Informative. Yes, this informative. Is pure information. So that was, we got them all right. Let's, I am going to, Stop sharing for a second. Okay, let's go to um, to this section. Where is it? So we're skipping that. We're going to do a couple of practices on this. This is actually going to be something that I'm going to put in your email, and it's going to have um, these, and we we want to do like a couple of them now. So we're looking and we're going to uh, read this description. We're going to determine what the author, author's purpose is to entertain, persuade, or inform. Uh, and then we got to, we sort of need to explain it. Okay. That's that next step. We can identify it, but we need to be able to explain it. So number one, a story about a family trying to stick together and survive through the great depression in the Midwest uh, in the 1930s. Entertain. So this is entertainment, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to write here, but it's entertainment. Why is it enter or, or let's let's look at one or two examples or sentences that we can say about this that proves it's entertainment. Because it's about a family trying to stick together to survive the Great Depression. Yeah, so it's just simply a story about a family trying to do A, B, and C. And you, you can write in here when you explain your answers, it's, it's not trying to convince us to believe anything. And it is, um, uh, I think that's a really good, good way of putting it, okay? Um, and it, it's not just information, it's, it's probably entertainment, okay? Let's go uh, to the next one in uh, a section. Let's see if we got that right. So it's entertaining. And the stories are written to entertain. This is a story, okay? Number two, a section in a history book describing the conditions and causes of the Great Depression in the Midwest 1930s. A little bit different. So this is inform why. Because it's a section of a history book. So it's in a history book, okay? So that's information. And it might be entertaining to you or me, but it's more or less information. And then what is it doing? Telling us... Conditions and causes. Yeah, okay, so we're seeing on this one, it is informative, the text provides information. Oh, oh I see the about, answers. Um, yeah, we have the, I'll give you the answers for the two. Uh, Great Depression before there was a written form. Uh, number three, an instructional booklet describing how to operate a smartphone. Is that persuasive? Is that entertaining? Or is that informative? Persuaded. It's what? Persuaded. 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 Um, so you got to think of it. It's an instructional book on how to use a, a smartphone. It doesn't tell you sh you should believe that you should use a certain smartphone. It's just. Oh, I thought we were on four. <laughs> Oh yeah, number number three. I'm on. So it's just an instructional uh, booklet on how to operate a smartphone. But it's what? It's informative. 
It's just informative. informative. Okay. Um, we know that because it's just simply an instructional booklet and it's telling us just how to use it. So number three, this text is instructional manual, therefore it was written to just inform. Number five, an article where the author argues that an iPhone is better than an Android phone. That's gotta be precise. That is definitely persuasive because they're getting persuasive you to believe or to choose a certain way, okay? Um, is everybody an iPhone user or do we have Android users? I don't, I have Android. You do? I, I'll, I'll pray for you tonight, okay? Oh my <laughs> God. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the author is attempting in number four to influence the reader. Therefore, this is persuasive. So you have those two types of phones and the author is saying this phone is better than the other and reasons why, okay? Let's look at number five, and I think we'll call it and go to IXL.com, okay? A poem, all right, that'll give you a hint. A poem about why the iPhone is the greatest consumer electronic device ever made. Entertainment. It is entertainment, but I think it might and even be more, again, it's reason. trying to tell us that it's the greatest consumer electronic device ever made. So let's see. I want to see what it says. It does say entertain, but I think it also has a persuasive. If you put persuasive and you can back it up by saying it's the greatest consumer electronic device ever made, you could say that too, but I, um, th these guys are gonna go with purely entertainment. The main purpose of this, uh, for writing this poem, writing poems and stories is to entertain, even if the lessons learned or reader could be influenced. Okay, I, I agree to disagree with that, okay? Let's look at IXL. We're going to go to learning. Actually, oh. let's, look, let's look at that analytics real quick. You can see my screen, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so we're looking at that. We have, and I want to go week by week. Is it the achievement summary? I don't think that's it. This week. So I need to get on some of these people who are at the zero levels because you guys are breaking my heart. Uh, let's look at this week. So this week, and then we're going to do. Remember that you want to look at the student action plan. All right. And let me harass um, Mr. Brian. You don't mind, right? Not at all. So this is giving us exact examples and exact recommendations for to build vocabulary and things like that. So I'm very proud of uh, Mr. Brian with um, high school in the college level vocabulary skills. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Yeah, I feel Gotta terrific work. about this. Got to work on some of these reading strategies, and it'll literally give you them to do. Okay, so don't forget that um, I'm trying to give you as much of an opportunity to work on language arts, science, social studies, things like that. So here's some recommendations that you could use for that. I want to go to. Let's go to learning. So we're going to learning. We're not in math. We are in language arts. All righty. And we are going to go to third grade real quick. And we are going to look at author's purpose, okay? These two sections. See if you guys can't help me, right? We're looking at the main purpose of the uh, this book page. All right, chapter one. Alice loved working at the zoo. It was her job to feed the monkeys. One morning, Alice was giving the monkeys breakfast and she noticed one was missing. Alice turned around and her mouth dropped open. Oh no, she shouted. Is this to entertain people with a story of monkeys, to inform people about being a zookeeper or to persuade people about visiting the zoo? Entertainment. Yeah, it's gotta be entertainment. Entertainment, very, very good. Let's see, awesome sauce. Next one. This is the Chicago Journal. We should know from where we should already be thinking, okay, this might be just informative, 
But this says the weekend weather report. It's going to be a beautiful spring weekend in Chicago. Friday will be sunny and hot. Saturday will be cloudy but warm during the day. At night, ex expect clear skies. On Sunday, there will be uh, some light rain in the afternoon. Okay, so it's giving you information. So is that informing people? about the weather in Chicago, persuading people to move to Chicago or to inform people about spring showers? Oh, there are two informs. There's two informs, but which one is better? Is it um, only talking about spring showers or is it informing people about the weather in Chicago? In informing the weather about Chicago. Yeah, because this is only, we're only talking Sunday where there's a little shower. All right, yeah. We got, that's correct. Okay, poetry corner. Uh, my dog ate my homework. Oh, teacher, please uh, listen. I would not tell a lie. My dog ate my homework. He's such a playful guy. He opened his mouth, his teeth dripping wet. Now my, whole, my work is gone because of my pet. Okay, we got a little poem here. Is this in information uh, to inform people about one way to write a poem? poem to persuade people to buy a dog or to entertain entertain people with a poem about a dog. What do you guys think? It's to entertain people. Entertain people. It's entertainment. Look at us. We're just murdering it. Okay. Uh, the White House. The White House is in Washington, D.C. It is where the President of the United States lives and works, unless it's the weekend. The White House is, a very, is very big and has six floors. 35 bathrooms, and 132 rooms. Oh, wow. That's a lot of rooms. A little bit. Inform people um, about the White this, House. Inform. Is this to in, entertain people with a poem about the White House, inform people about the White House, or persuade people to visit Washington, D.C.? What's our best answer? Inform. Information. Inform. Um, all right, uh, let's look at this one. Main, pur main purpose of this for sure, Dr. Daniel Castro, the children's dentist. Step, uh, steps to a great smile. Brush your teeth twice a day. Floss your teeth once a day. Don't eat too much sugar. See your dentist twice a year. Is this information about how uh, informa to inform people about the way to have healthy teeth, to inform people about the parts of, of a tooth, to persuade people to buy a new toothbrush? Inform people about, about how to inform people. I think we got that. Oh, oh wait. I just clicked the wrong one, didn't I? I just, it was an accident. So I clicked the wrong one. Uh, it, we did say verbally that that was correct, that to inform people the way they're healthy teeth. All right, so let's look. We're going to go to the next section in um, author's purpose by identifying author's purpose in a passage real quick. Okay, so, all right. Amaze your friends <clears throat> at any party or event with a show from Magic Magnus. A one hour show for up to 10 guests It is uh, is only $50. Is this to persuade, to inform, to entertain? Inform. It is info, but what do you guys think? Are oh, they... no, it's to persuade. Yeah, it's, it's to persuade. I think it's to persuade because it's, it's bragging about um, um, amazing your friends with this person, and it's only one out, and it's only $50, okay? So let's see if it's persuade. We got that correct. Good. Buy one children's ticket and get another children's ticket for free. Experience the magic of live theater. Persuade again. Yes, persuasion like a commercial. A hurricane is an enormous storm that forms over the ocean. The center of the hurricane is called the eye, it is, and it is the calmest part of the storm. Persuade, inform, entertain. Inform. What do you guys think? Um. A hurricane is an enormous storm that forms over the ocean. The center of the hurricane is the eye and is the calmest part of the storm. It's too informed. 
yeah, it's Inform. not it's not persuading me that that hurricanes are good or bad, and it's not super entertaining. No offense. No, nope. it is. It's inform. It's just information. Terrifical. Yes. Let's look at this part. Okay. Um, all right. Is it a fossil? Philip asked. His dad studied the rock and smiled. Yes, he said. I do believe it is. Um, to entertain. Entertain. I believe it's an entertainment. Brilliant. Run, Brilliant. run cool water over the cabbage, then cut it into thin strips, chop the tomatoes, and toss them with the cabbage. Make a dressing with oil, salt, and lemon juice. Pour it over the salad. These are instructions to make a salad, it sounds like. Is this to persuade, inform, or entertain? Inform. 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 Fantastico. Carmen and Jamal are getting married July 3rd. Ooh, that's fun. At the main yeah, hall on Parson Road. Dinner will follow at Ak uh, Atkinson Hall, at the Atkinson Hall. Inform. Is yeah. This is like an inform. invitation to somebody's wedding. It's just informative. Sounds fun though. Super duper. Place one foot on the ground in the direction of the goal, then use the top of the other foot to kick the ball. To inform. Yeah. To inform. This is instructions on how to be an amazing soccer player. Soccer player. So, what I want you to do, whether it's today or another day, I want to get you guys from. Um, again, I started at third grade just to get used to the author's purpose, the idea of what we're, we're getting so we can get several in a row. Move toward that eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grades levels um, so uh, you can kick some butt on there. So I want to look at, so this is what it looks like third grade. And then I'm assuming that we're going to have much more reading on the twelfth grade section. What is this? Identify the audience and purpose. Oh, so it doesn't even have author's purpose. It's audience purpose. Okay. So then it gets a little more intricate. Okay. You see the passages are a little longer, right? Mm hmm. All right. So, Newsy LA, I assigned some things today. A couple of them, actually. And remember, I want you to start with your Lexile, like in the middle or on the lower end, and then read yes, it. Yes, 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 that's what you said. Yeah. So, let's look at my assignments. I sent everybody an email, and it's probably not you guys, because you guys are in this, but I've got, uh, I don't know, 25 students instead of 32, seven are missing. Oh, now I have 27, so that's going up. So the email helped. Oh, 27, huh? 27, yeah. I Come on, I thought we were testing the GD in English, not Spanish. Yes, that's true. I, just, I know. Me. <laughs> that's okay, I'm just me and, me and Mr. Dunning were, were just thinking in Spanish. So what I did here is we looked at this section is homemade coronavirus masks. The article I think is pretty cool. Uh, asked a couple of questions that uh, how many of you guys wear a mask? Would you wear a homemade mask? Would you make your yeah. own sort of deal? Um, oh. Just giving you different topics to do. Some of you guys like that. Again, if you don't like reading what I suggested, that's totally fine. You can read whatever you want. Um, I just want to give you kind of an outline of different things. The next section or the next article was about uh, – animals and what has been more of a they call it animals taking advantage during the lockdown when we were locked down we had quite a few um deep, like positive outcomes again people were not on the streets people were staying home they were not going to beaches they had so um there were different environments animal environments that really thrived okay uh, and then i asked here are some very positive outcomes through a terrible pandemic can you think of any that you've discovered about yourself or have been able to see yourself okay um go back to the other one 
I love that Newsy LA is so um, super fast. Next one, I thought Lightning and Thunder. First off, we have Lightning as our hockey team because we are the Lightning. Cap oh, you can call it the Tampa Bay Bolts. The Bolts, yeah. We are the Lightning capital of the world, okay? Asked if you guys have been close to a strike or do you know one, someone who's been close to a strike, okay? Um, so, out of those three, would you like to look at any of them? I'll sure. Do assignments. All right. So, Miss Raven, it is your birthday tomorrow, right? What? It is. Oh. Yes. So, you want to pick which one we look at? Homemade uh, coronavirus, the animals taking advantage of lightning and thunder? What do you think? Raven, which one would you like to pick? Are we not hearing you? Uh-oh. He's off now. <laughs> All right, I'll pick the first one then. I want to look, I want to just show you this visual at least, okay? This I thought was an interesting visual. We have that cloth mask, and it's like an electrostatic friction, and it, basically what it is is trying to cut down at least at 90% of the different particles, okay? Are any of you guys wearing masks when you go out? I have to at work. You have to at work? Not me, I don't. Yeah, so I have to at least if I'm interacting with coworkers or um, students, I definitely wear one. Um, yeah. uh, it was a requirement in my own office, and I'm not in my office right now. I'm actually in the media center, but I'm in my own location. I'm not wearing one while I, while I do. Um, so a couple of big ideas that they wanted to look at here is talking about homemade masks and how beneficial they are, okay? Um, and then it got into how the fit. Okay, you can make the most amazing mask, and if it's too small for your face, it ain't gonna work, and if it's too big, it's gonna be funny as well. All right, so I also wanted to look at activity feed, I think. Let's look at the reading summary. Now, these are my reading summaries of everybody. And I have Mr. Brian, I asked you again. You got to get on here, buddy. I'm trying. I know, but I, look, it, I got no more, no data on all three of yours. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> okay. I'm working on it. Jeez. I, don't, I don't mean to call you out, but I just called you out. I believe you. All right. So, uh, questions, comments for me? I'm going to stop uh, sharing not really. for a second. Maybe I'll stop sharing. No questions? No comments? No. Nope. nope. So, I will probably be sending a couple of the mini Zooms. I want to do one on between now and tomorrow on adjectives, adverbs, another one on verbs kind of simple stuff that you can just work on and kind of get that skill set back, like refresh your memory, things like that. I know Elijah has next week set up, right? For yeah, well, taking, taking some of the tests. Yeah, I've considered that. And um, I haven't scheduled it yet, but I have considered next week um, so I can get it as early as possible. Yeah, I would, just with your scores, I would definitely, and I'll go back. I want to show everybody this again is, um, let's see if I can get yeah, so I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna schedule it today and uh, work on whatever I can this week. Sorry about that. That's my 15 minute reminder of my next meeting. 
All right, so I wanted to show you guys the practice test over here like I did the other day, just in case somebody missed it from the video. Everybody, I don't care if you are coming out second grade or 12th grade, it doesn't really matter. The GD Ready test, there's four sections, math, science, social studies, and language arts. Go ahead and purchase that, $3 per test, okay? They're on sale, all right? 50% um, off, okay? It's going to, for a couple of reasons, build your confidence, all right? These are real questions that you'll see on the official test, okay? Because it's GED practice, it's written by the same people who write the GED test, right? Oh. You'll see very similar, similar information. It's really good because, again, we talked about this the other day, this is like a stoplight. If you score 100 to 133, we're gonna stop and work on those skills and then try to get through the stoplight. If you're at the yellow zone, Okay, you're all you might need a little more practice, but sometimes, like if I'm late going to going to work, I might run that yellow light. You're allowed to take that regular test if you want, Brian. Okay, you I'm can, already at the yellow light, that's where I'm at. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. If you feel confident in that section, whichever section you want to take, but if you take mm -hmm. all four and you have several that are in green that likely to pass. Like it says right here, you're likely to pass. Please schedule right away. Like we're not, we That's don't want to wait. Going to do. We don't want to wait for you to graduate three years from now. Okay. What it does, it does cut your, it focuses, it saves your time. It focuses your study plan. All right. It helps us yep. get the skill sets or focus on the skill sets that we need to. Okay. And then you have, look at this, they even give you a bigger discount for all four sections. If you buy all four Probably sections right. at once, that's $10 and 49 cents. Almost 11 bucks. Yes. Um, or if you take them singly by themselves, they're $3 per test, okay? Uh, what does it say this about the ready test? How long are the ready tests? They are exactly half the length of the real test, just like, you don't practice running a marathon by waking up tomorrow morning and run, running 26.2 miles because you'll die. You want to start with a mile, two miles, <laughs> three miles. Then you might want to hit the half marathon, okay, 13-1. Uh, they are timed, okay? And then um, you want to take one subject at a time. You don't, we never really recommend that you take all four sections at the same time. Students have done that. When they take the real test, you can't take three, four tests at the same time. That's just really not good, okay? You're gonna schedule that and you can do that on your own computer. You wanna do it in an area that's gonna be quiet. You don't wanna have a bunch of kids or parents or whoever running around and disrupting you while you're trying to get your practice test done, okay? Mm -hmm. You're gonna do it all through GED. You never pay us any of this money, okay? How many times can you take it? Um, as long as you like. Many times as you purchase it. You can take it. If, you, it, if uh, you've got the money, you can, you can pay for it as many times as you want. Okay? Uh, and then all of the subjects are included. That is math, reasoning through language arts, which is language arts. And then there's also a writing component. And I'll probably do a mini Zoom on that, how to do the writing component. And then there's social studies. And then there's also science. Okay? Is there a printable test? I don't think there is. No. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a charger for the laptop. It's about to die. All righty. So let me go back to stop sharing. And any questions, comments? We're at the 50 minute mark. No. Yeah. I think I'm, no, we're good. I'm good. Are we solid gold? Yeah, we're solid gold. Good. All right. So, um, you guys are tearing it up. You four are definitely any of the emails that I'm sending that have sort of a disappointed tone to them. It has nothing to do with you. It's students that I have to call today who have done goose egg zero. Right. So they made us do all this work to put them in class and then have neglected to do any of the work. Isn't that crazy? So, um, I'll be do you forward. think, do what? Do you think you can stock my IXL diagnostic report that and I can, look at it? That I can what? 
stuck my IXO diagnostic report and look at it for me? The, the printout, you mean? Yeah, the what you were doing for Brian. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna st I'll stop recording real quick.